So hey y'all and welcome back. Welcome back to Lisa's Cottage. I'm so happy to have you here and I really, really am. I do appreciate each and every one of you that come to, uh, to view this video and that has taken part in subscribing to our little channel here. Um, words are just not enough to tell you how much I appreciate all of you and your support and your encouragement and um, I just really want to say thank you and I know thank you is not enough but I really do thank you all so welcome back to our tidbits of cleaning tips Monday series um, I guess we'll call this episode 2 and we're going to st be starting back on tip number one I just keep like a dish pan a small dish pan I've gotten this at the hospital uh, when I had my thyroid removed last year um, in October and I brought it home with me and I just like to fill it up with the water and the dish soap to wash the um, things that I do not put in the dishwasher we bring big pots and pans in here too uh, to wash in place of putting them in the dishwasher and taking up so much space so that's why I keep the scrub brushes and the bottle brushes I use in these cups to get down in the bottom of them and to wash them out really good and you see the uh, straw scrubber in there it came with a package of hard plastic straws I had ordered when I ordered these uh, a year or so back for my iced coffee the plastic uh, clear cup down there it uh, came with hard plastic straws but I ordered extra straws um, off of Amazon and when I ordered those extra hard straws um, because I have a grandchild I will not name names that likes to chew on straws that I thought at the time that they may be using um, these cups but I have reserved these cups for me for my iced coffee so that would be tip number one in place of filling a sink putting the stopper in here and filling the sink with a sink full of um, warm to hot water and your dish dish soap to wash uh, hand washing items if you had a smaller like dish pan you can just fill that and that saves space it saves money it saves um, dishwashing liquid and it's just really handy for me to use I had much rather um, fill this up to wash my hand washables such as these things than to fill the sink with water so that's just tip one. Maybe you can use it, and maybe not, and, but it's just a tip that I use in my home. And while we're in the laundry room, tip two. These are drying mats that you would use in your kitchen to, um, to let your dishes or your pots and pans um, drip dry. And I just uh, wanted something on top of the uh, washer and the dryer in here, because as you can see, I keep two bins over here once for it says hand washing on it but rarely do I hand wash I have a, a, a setting on my washer a cycle on my washer that's a gentle wash and I will put hand wash in the washer and use the gentle cycle but that's for my gentle cycle but it does say hand wash and then that's just my cleaning rags the second one over there but to keep from stuff just sitting on top of the uh, washer and dryer in here I just put these mats up here and that way it keeps them from getting scratched up and scuffed up. So that's tip two. Here's another tip and I realized some of these are not considered cleaning tips per se but maybe maintaining cleaning maybe you could call them but like this one nightstand and Ken's nightstand nightstand we have placemats that's just black placemats we have on there I have eight of them and then when I change the sheets, I just take these off too because I'll dust the room. And um, I take those off and put them in the washer too. But I go ahead, being that I have eight of them, I'll go ahead and just get two fresh ones out of the mat drawer. Um, and then replace those, the dirty ones. And then when they get clean, when the sheets are ready to be put back on, I'll just put the clean ones back in the drawer that holds all the mats. My nightstand, which is here, will not fit here so my nightstand is actually an old sewing machine that my mom had uh, it still has the sewing machine in it if you're interested someday maybe I could open it up and show it to you 
and um, the top was ruined on it when she gave it to me. It was bad, it was warped. So my husband made a new top for me right here. And then when he was making the top for me, he went ahead and did the black rub through. So that's the black rub through that I am known to have several pieces of and love the black rub, rub through. Seems like the majority of the people are going with a lighter furniture, the cream or white. And I seem to be staying with the black rub through. So there's a tip, you can use placemats in other places other than at the table. A couple place. times we have had spills. I'm not gonna name any names who did the spilling, <laughs> but these placemats saved us from a huge mess on top of the furniture because it just soaked it up, what, what spilt on the furniture. So there's another tip. You want to dust your blinds, but you don't have one of those little blind duster thingies, but you want to dust your blinds. And I did mine the first of spring, or the last of winter, first of spring, somewhere in there. I did these in here. I have more to go. Um, that will be a fall project. project. You just go to your hubs. I'm gonna turn you this way in case. You just go to your hubs' drawer and you pull out one of his socks and you put it on your hand like a mitt or even if you have mittens that you wanna turn into your blind duster or hand gloves. Just put it on your hand and rub your hand along the blinds. And if you wanna get a, a, two, a pair of socks of his and Go with your right hand and your left hand. There you got it. You got your own blind duster. And you never have to tell your man, dust, wash, dry, put her back away, and call it done. While some of us gals like our purses, while some of us gals like our shoes, this gal likes cleaning tools. I get excited over cleaning tools. And one area I had never thought about looking for tools to use to clean the house is over in the auto section or at an auto uh, store. I had a friend that taught me this many years back here. She was using to dust furniture, hard to reach furniture. And the good part about them is uh, they can be removed. That can be slipped off and put into the washer and cleaned up and it's called a two-piece microfiber exterior car duster set. So be sure to check out your auto section for cleaning tools and just let your imagination run wild. I bought this too to wash the top of my husband's truck. This pad here stretches over this to wash, to wash the very, I'm trying not to say wash, I didn't realize I say wash, um, to wash the top of his truck. But I've also used it, the reason it's so yucky looking, I've used it on our small RV trailer um, to clean it, I wash it like I would wash a car. And I'm very particular about washing my car to the point that I say hands off and I wash it myself. And then on those days when I, I do my cleaning of my car, if he's home or if I can get a hold of his truck, um, I will wash his too, um, which he loves that but it is hard to get to some spots, so I bought that, and that pad goes over it to reach the very top of his truck. And then, like, these products that are made for the floor, I've had this one forever, and I throw it in the washing machine once I've used it. And um, don't overlook these items that you could use for dusting your actual walls. Uh, they work great for getting up high and just bringing them down, you know, collecting the dust and the dirt from your walls. And again, your walls get dirty just like your mattresses, just like your bed covers, they all get dusty too. So maybe once a year um, or twice a year, like spring and um, fall, that you can do your uh, deep down cleaning and that's a tip. Be sure to check out the auto department um, where they sell parts for cars and where they sell uh, items to clean your cars with 
or your automobiles, check that section out too because you may find something handy dandy to use in a way you never thought about. And then you can just remove the pads and throw them in a, a wash or if you have a, some people like to throw their stuff into a pail of warm water with dishwashing uh, soap, which mine would be Dawn, and just wash them that way and let them uh, drip dry. Not to put them in the dryer, but let them air dry or drip dry or lay flat and dry. I have some done this way, but I don't always do it. You can take your dryer sheets and you can cut them in half and you can save on dryer sheets. You can see I still have some full sheets in there. And then there's the half sheets. Like if it's a small load, you can just throw half in. So there's some that's cut in half. You know, like when you erase something with your pencil eraser and you've got the little rubber pieces all over um, that come from your eraser that you usually just brush off with your hand. Well, that's what that's for, just to get those off of your paper, like if you were doing drafting or a drawing or something. But I use it on um, like delicate furniture or delicate areas that I'm trying to get in the corner and I don't want to use a hard toothbrush. And uh, so this is even softer, that's just super soft. So you can get just any kind of real soft brush and this is probably found in the craft section, maybe at Walmart or even you can find one on Amazon or like um, Michaels or something in the craft area. So that's what that is used for and that's what I have it hanging there for, just that. To dust those delicate areas that a hard brush would leave scratch marks. And then the days that you are washing your sheets and you get your dryer sheets out, this is already soaked up so I'm showing you after I've done it. Um, just take your dryer sheets, this was one whole sheet and two half sheets because I cut them in half. Um, to try to, some, some loads don't need two sheets, so it just only needs a half a sheet, so I cut those in half, so that's another tip. Cut your dryer sheets in half, and then the loads that you need a whole sheet, just put two halves in. So that'll, that's another tip, and that might help you. But take your used dryer sheet and um, your wax warmer, put your dryer sheets down into the wax warmer, and let, let it sit for a little bit. And then um, I don't walk away from it. I just let it sit for long enough that I can see it soaking up. And then I'll remove it from the warmer and all the wax is soaked up into the used dryer sheets. Another bedroom tip. Um, today's sheet day. It's Friday. I don't do it twice. I don't always do it twice a week, but I will try to do it once a week. I take the comforter and the blanket that we sleep under and I just take them outdoor and shake them really hard just like you would shake a, a floor rug shake them out real good because you would be surprised how much dust and yuck can come out of our bed covers and I will wash them every now and then maybe once a month or so but uh, I like to take them out and shake them out real good and on a day like today I just like to leave them sit I have a clothesline down there I could take and take them down there and drape it over and get some fresh air but I was just being lazy and just throw them out here on the porch and just let them get some fresh air on them. But that's just a tip to take your bed coverings off on your days that you're washing your sheets and take them out and shake them out as hard as you can, just like you would a bath rug. And watch what flies from them. It's a windy day here, but that sun is gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. So if you find your uh, the tops of your wax warmers have become stained, from some of the darker waxes, um, darker tinted waxes. You can just pour some rubbing alcohol in, in it. It doesn't take much. Just uh, make sure you get pour it up to where it's stained and then let it sit five, 10, 15 minutes and then come back with just a paper towel and wipe it out. And that's a tip on how to clean your wax warmer tops when they become stained what that will look like when you pour your alcohol in there and just let it sit and then wipe it out and if you let it sit too long of course I'm sure you know that it will evaporate I have done that I've forgotten and when I came back it had evaporated and I had to um, pour more in there because you need to wipe it out while it's still damp with the alcohol
So just in case you're questioning, what is a wax warmer top? I think I call it lid, but this doesn't have a lid on it. It's the piece, the dish, that holds the wax on the warmer, that is uh, the dish holds the wax, and then the light bulb warms this dish here to melt the wax. I like to run it around the room and take it all to one corner. And I'll just keep, you know, working around the room and just try to keep taking the dust and the dirt all to one corner. And then once I have that room done, I like to take my cordless vac and then I will clean up that corner. And this does come apart right here if I wanted to use the, just the hand part of it. But I just use the entire thing and clean up all the dust and the dirt that I've gathered into one corner of the room. And you kind of want to try to remember what corner that you go to because if you're like me, sometimes you can forget to go back to that corner and then realize later there's a pile of dirt and dust and whatever on the floor that you failed to vacuum up. So when you're leaving that room, be sure to check that corner that you've vacuumed it. And you can see I just have my uh, cordless vac right here to remember to get all my dirt and dust up. So there's another tip. Pile all your dirt and your dust up into one corner. Just keep working the floors to one corner of the room. And then your final um, sweep up, use your cordless vac to vacuum it up. And there you have it. No broom or dustpan needed. And another tip. Um, I keep this charged, or I try to keep it charged, this uh, battery uh, cordless vac. And a lot of times you'll see it by this door right here. This is a door that I go in and out to do uh, yard work or anything that I need to do outside, out toward the back area, I use this door. And when I start seeing the carpets getting uh, dirt and dust on it, I'll just grab this uh, cordless back and I'll hit it while I can instead of putting it off to a cleaning day that I've designated for the whole day to clean. That way it helps keep the dust and the dirt down too that I will bring in from outdoors. So that's another tip. If you have a cordless vac, be sure it's always charged, like put it on the charger at night. I keep my charger over in the corner by the front door just to try to keep it out of sight. I started off with it here in this corner, which is a great place, but it was just, um, just the first thing you could see when you walk around the corner here. So I just moved it over to that corner in the, uh, by the front door. But if you have a cordless vac, or if you don't have one and you're thinking about getting one, I would highly encourage you to get a cordless vac. Once you've used them, I think you will love it and you, it will be something that you use a lot, um, as well as you will use it in between your uh, designated house cleaning days that you can use it so you don't have so much more to do. It helps to keep the uh, dirt up.